Boxingvoice.com live here with Mark Breland. Mark, how are you? Good afternoon. How you doing? Everything's good. Man, you still got it. I seen you yesterday doing the pads. You really still have a lot of pop. They definitely are not lying when they say pop was the last thing to go. Yeah, um, I mean, I just, you know, I, I, I keep it up. I try to keep it up as much as possible. Man, you was definitely uh, leading with the jab. Um, does it frustrate you? You can't get Deontay Wilder to kind of use his jab more? Well, that's what I've been working on. I mean, that's what I've been talking to him a lot, a lot. You know, using his jab. I said before, you know, I think that's the key to this fight here. Tyson Fury has a good jab, but he, he kind of jabbed, I'll jab Deontay the last fight. You now you gotta go, now you gotta take the jab much more. You know, stop him from jabbing so much. So yesterday, BT Sports, who's promoting this fight in the UK, uh, released some footage with Ben Davison breaking down the Wilder Fury 2. And he said he would like to see Tyson jab with his left hand, jab Wilder's power right hand. He says if you can occupy Wilder's hand, in theory, he's got to use it for defense versus using it for offense. What's your thoughts on that? Is I mean, that like a, a sound plan? But that's basically plan? what a jab is for. I mean, that's what you're doing. You know, you, you know. I mean, at the same time, I mean, my thing is, okay, when he jab, you jab when he jab. Make him block, make him do the same, do the same thing he does. Throw a feint, throw a hook. You know, that's my whole thing. It's like, I don't mind. You know, I mean, I, I, as a as a boxer, I mean, you want you know keep the jab in his face, keep the jab in his face. You know. So he's busy jabbing, he's busy jabbing, so I'm gonna faint the hooks in right hand, just break up the monotony of the whole thing. Now, I talked to Wilder yesterday, and you know, every time I come, I tell him, I wor I'd rather see you Bermain Stavern 1, every fight. Right. Just do Bermain Stavern 1, by the sixth round, these dudes is tired, the, that battering ram of a jab got them exhausted, yeah. right hand just lands. He said, I'm not here to go rounds. So, so how do you get that through his head? Like it's not obviously it's not gonna get through his head at this point. I mean it's just not. No, I mean you know he's he's got that power to get you out of there, but you know sometimes I mean if you don't catch the man, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you may catch it, but you may not catch him right. This is basically like the last fight with him and Tyson. You know he caught him at the last time, right? The last the ninth round or something. Like that. Does same. that make you nervous? Cause I mean Luis Ortiz. The world, yeah. right, had him six nothing. How, like, were you calm in the corner, as calm as Wilder? Because I didn't watch the telecast to hear anything you might have said. I watched no, the live fight. I was calm in the corner because I was like, you know, just keep jabbing. You got to keep jabbing. Just throw the right hand, you know, throw the hooks, but you, you know, he's coming in. He's keeping. But I noticed Ortiz was coming in, but he would drop his hands as he's coming in. So you're the trainer, right? Or one of them and uh, Ben Davidson again gets just you know, BT letting him run loose at the mouth. He's giving all the advice he can. He says Wilder never throws the right hand. He says never. So this is a question I'm asking you. He says he never throws that right hand unless it's by the nipple or the waist. Have you ever seen Wilder throw a straighter right hand or not straighter would be the wrong word, but uh, is that right hand in a higher position than what Ben Davidson is saying, which is the nipple or the waist? That's, um... I've never looked at it. I've never, I've never looked at it like that. But I think I'm like, you know... Okay, if she picks it up and he throws it, then what's going to happen? I mean, he's got a head. He's hitting guys from here. He's hitting guys from here knocking them out. Imagine you putting it up there at the right spot. So, but isn't that the, the, I mean, the knock, but the beauty in him, right? That he's not traditional, but he right. continues to get it done. Exactly. I mean, you know, he's very awkward. And, you know, it's like, if he hits you, if he hits you right, it's a right. Going into this second fight, do you want to see him with that, I guess, calm, relaxed demeanor, like, I got this, eventually I'll land, that whole, his phrase is, I only need to be perfect for one second, you need to be perfect for 12 rounds. Right. 
my thing, you know, I, I would love to see him go in there and box and, and I'll box this guy. I mean, you know, you catch him, if you catch, when you catch him, you catch him. But, you know, box for a little while and then, you know, boom, 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 just, just catch him. But, you know, he's a different guy, you know, a different fighter. I think it was the third round of the Fury Wilder fight that Wilder bust his nose or yeah. broke it. But, uh, why wouldn't he, I'm asking the same question, like, why wouldn't he do that more when he's seeing how effective it is? You know, and, and, and like in this fight here, my thing is, you know, sure you got that cut over his eye. Yes. My thing, jab at, jab, jab at, make him put his hands up over there. Make him, make him think about that, make him put his... Well, I guess his right hand over, his, keep his right hand up, keep his right hand up. What's your thoughts on this uh, rumor that Fury is not sparring to the head because of the cut? He went as far as to not allow any cameras from Fox or ESPN into his gym. Um, do you believe that he's not taking shots to the head, even with headgear, in preparation for the I'm hardest sure. punch in the world? Probably, probably, probably so. I think, I think he's... I think he's doing that. You think he's not wearing headgear? No. I mean, like, he's not going to the head? No, he's not going to the head. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure of that. Because, you know, cuts like that, they, you know, you don't have that much skin up in, up in the air or something like that. It takes a while to heal, but if you hit it, if you keep getting, if you keep getting hit, it's going to pop over again. Hmm. And that's my, that's my thing. Jab, jab right there. Jab. Hit him in the eye. Right in the eye. Was the Wilder Fury one fight the first time you knew that Wilder had uh, knockout power throughout the entire fight? Because we've seen him go 12 with Bermain and not get the knockout. Um, and then, you know, what he did to Fury in that final round, did that already convince you or did you need convincing of the, you know, that it... Because I mean, obviously we fatigue with time and, and as the rounds go by, but it just seemed that punch or that combination seemed like he was had all his energy. No, when, when he threw that right hand, when he, he threw the hook and then he threw the right hand, I mean, the right hand came so perfect. It was like, and everything was on it. I knew right then and there, I'm like, oh, he still got it. You know, even, in that, even in that fourth round. The urban myth amongst the boxing community is that the left hook woke Fury up. The right hand knocked him out, was sending him to the canvas, then boom, the left hook wakes him up. Do you buy into that? No. Okay. I think when, when he got hit, he was out. He was out on the way down. When he hit the canvas, bang, his head hit the canvas. That's what woke him up. Mm. I, I don't know if I've ever asked, did you have an issue with Jack Reese giving him time because I've seen Daniel Jacobs versus Dimitri Pirog where the ref when Jacobs went to get in that sit-up position the ref just pushed him down and was like nah no you know even even on the BT Sports uh, commentating yesterday they released David Hayes said many referees would have not given Fury a chance uh, did you have an issue with Jack Reese giving him a chance? I mean, I mean, I, I don't have an issue with it but I, I kind of know I realized he did because it was like you know, you did a dance pretty much and you're doing all this here and man, the man's down. That's what it count. It was a long count. It was a very long count. So you don't agree with the sobriety test after a knockdown? The sobriety test meaning walk to the left, walk to the right, come forward. Are you okay? Do you want to continue? No, no, I mean, that, and that's always been the way. That's always been the way. You know, okay, come in, stick, come forward. All right, well, let's get to these questions from the people. First one is coming from Christopher Riley. He says, do you feel Javon Sugar Hill will help Fury in this rematch? No. No? Not at all? No. Why? Um, I mean, I know Sugar Hill, nice guy. Um, there's not, I don't think there's much he can do for it. Using the jab, trying to make him box. But Fury is so, to, to where he seems to be so stubborn to the point where he's going to do what he's going to do. Mm. All right. Man, you know, I really want to jump over to Fury's Instagram because I believe this morning he posted a picture uh, on his Instagram and he said 270 pounds coming at Deontay Wilder. 
So I just want to verify that before I ask you your thoughts on that sort of weight. And he says, yes, 19 stones, 270 pounds coming at the Bronze Bomber. Do you think that's too heavy? Is he going to take away some of his mobility? Exactly. And so when, and when he falls, it's going to be harder for him to get up. Mm. <laughs> Heavier. Okay. Well, uh, the next one is from uh, Mad Bent 100. It says, let's go, champ. Is Wilder going to Fury's body in the rematch? He should. How is your son's boxing career? Well, I mean, you know, he, um, the first fight he went, he went to the body. I haven't gone to the body. And he admitted he abandoned going to the body after the fifth round. But um, that's a big thing going to the body because, you know, he, he's got all this weight on. And um, so it'll slow him down a little bit. And how is your son's boxing career going? Well, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's been calm. Still amateur? Yeah, he's still amateur. He just turned 16. Okay, how many fights? Yeah, he has me he has 40, but I have him doing a lot of sparring. No, I seen you with him, working with him in uh, Gleason's one day. Right. All right, we got Carlito84 in the UK says, What's good, Mr. Breland? I've heard you in the past. Be somewhat critical of Wilder's training. Has this improved, and in what areas? Well, it improved a lot, you know, we're doing a lot of good boxing, and um, we're doing a lot of, doing, well, we're doing a lot of cardio for this time, a lot of cardio, a lot of boxing. My thing is, you know, don't worry about knocking the guy out, just worrying about winning the fight in boxing. And when you don't worry about it, that's when it comes easy. Mm. Um, do you think he doesn't like hit the heavy bag as often as normal fighters because he doesn't want to hurt the hands and the money makers or what? Like, didn't like when you used to train as a welterweight, did you not hit the bag like every day? Yeah, I hit the heavy bag. I hit the speed bag. He don't do none of that. He's really drinking, but I guess he does a lot. He does a lot of um, cardio stuff outside the ring. No, I mean I, I've been to the strength and conditioning for sure. Right. He's, he's getting it in with Joey Scott, and it obviously is working better than traditional boxing because he's never fatigued. Right. No, no, he's no, never no. been tired. Not at all. And even when we thought he was tired in a Fury fight, he still was able to get that knockdown in that last round. So his stamina is something to be uh, definitely impressed by. Okay, great stamina. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Killer in Sweden who says, how hard it, no, how hard is it do you get new techniques? What? How hard is it do get new? I don't know. I guess ingrained into anybody's experienced fighter. How hard is it to get new techniques ingrained into an already experienced fighter? Because I see a lot of fighters do things in the gym that they don't seem to have the confidence to do in the ring. Talk a bit about that, if you could, sir. All the best from Sweden. I mean, you know, you got a lot of fighters who look good in the gym, but not in the fight. But not in the fight. And you got a lot of fighters who do things in the gym that they don't do in a fight. Mm -hmm. And then you got some that do what they do in the gym and do what they do in the fight. It depends on the fighter. Mm. All right, all right. We got Jordan Baker just uh, showing love from Fort Myers, Florida. How we we have Stainless in Detroit says, I've noticed you work with the left hook and the left, Easier. and the check left hook. Oh, you want to pick up later? Okay, so uh, I've noticed you work with the left hook and the check left hook, changing levels, the catch and shoot, adding layers to the nuances that is Deontay Wilder. Thanks for keeping up the great work in his evolution. Are you coming to the TBV fam appreciation night in May? in DR. Do you, have you ever been to the Dominican Republic? Yeah. Oh, yeah? You liked it? It's nice. Yeah. What part you went to? Uh, I forget what part, but I hung out with... Um, Samson Luikovic. No, no. Fortuna. Guzman. Guzman. Ah, uh, you want Guzman? Oh, that was what? Baby Mike Tyson. Shout yeah. out. Uh, so we got Dominic in Seattle says, Mr. PBC here, please have your team bring back Deontay Wilder, the one-two punch, and watch out for Fury's one-two. 
it's Rock Wilder in the late rounds. That is true. Let's talk about that 12th round. He did get off the canvas, and a lot of people say he was able to kind of overtake that round. I mean, I don't see how you can overtake it when you got knocked down, yeah. um, but he did come back. He like, came back, but he was still out of it. Okay. So he wasn't impressed with the way he got back up and no, fought. But, yeah, because most people get back up and want to tie Because if I keep you a long count. <laughs> Long count. We got Tracy Sims who says, What up, Coach Breland? Are you looking to use that short uppercut on Fury if he decides to bang on the inside? Oh, yeah. Like the short uppercut? Uh, what, what's, what fight do you... What, like, which fight can you point out that Wilder used the uppercut the best? Would you say Ortiz won? Or what? I mean, I got another one, but I want to see which one you think of. I got one more. I think Ortiz won. I was but gonna no, say, was I was gonna say, uh, do a pie. He right, hit him with like a right. bunch of uppercuts. Yes, he did. I remember. But they were, I mean, he was jumping with those, though. I think the uh, the Ortiz probably was a little better mm -hmm. placed. Yeah. All right, we got uh, dual Ingram in other team sports, home field advantage plays a big role. In some people's eyes, does that apply in boxing, especially when it comes to Tyson versus Deontay? Does the crowd actually give a fighter energy? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm, depending on the fighter, I don't know. It depends on the fighter. I mean, the crowd, when I was fighting, I'm like, ain't nobody gonna get, they're not gonna get hit. <laughs> Can it add more, more stress, though? Cause some you gotta, fight, you gotta some, like to some perform fight, to your fans. You know, like, you know, like you, I'm looking at, you know, the standpoint of the fans out there. But it's like my thing, I don't think about the fans. Mm. We got Visa who says, "Are you gonna make D throw some more jabs?" Last fight was looking, for, he was looking for the big knockout blow a lot instead of setting it up. You answered that, but wanted to give him a shout out. You spoke about wanting to have him throw that jab. Rafael Ramirez says, uh, will the game plan lean more towards attacking Fury's body? I feel taking out his legs early in the fight would allow openings to do openings going into the later round. How does, how does and will that approach be different in the second fight? I think you you know, I, I would like him to go to the body a little bit more and use his jab. I want him to use his jab more. You can go, you can go to the body. So when it's time, you know, when, when the time comes, I want him to use that jab on right for the eye. Now there was, there's been a lot of talk of uh, wearing down the clock, and 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 he clinched a lot in that first fight. What are you doing to like stop the clinches? Or help, you know, I, I don't know, because he's 270 now, and them clinches not only yeah, wear the you clock, but tire you out. Wear you out, yeah. Just stay away from him. You know, if you want to, you know, pull on you, just put your shoulder in his chin and push him on. All right, we got Coyote in the United Kingdom says, is there anything you're going to do differently in this rematch? Win all the way. Win all the way? <laughs> Three more. Right here. Where's the ice thing? Right there. Jimmy in Delaware says, if Fury's eyes something Wilder's plan on attacking. What? It, oh, is Fury's eyes something on Wilder's plan of attacking? And is he going to give up rounds against Fury like he did against Ortiz just to land that right hand? No, we gotta use his jab. We gotta jab. He's gotta. He's gotta jab. All right. Seven and Cali says, I heard Ness bring up your son to be on the lookout for him. Can you let us know what he's got going on? Okay, well, he's going as far as boxing. Line. Yeah. He's got a good jab. He, he can punch. He can, one thing to do is punch. A good right hand. So my thing is to give him to do a lot of boxing. Stand. So he's only 16, though, right? Yeah, just turned 16. Does it? Does it? Do you see like that will and heart to be a fighter, or you think he'll just be doing it for the time being until he grows out of it? No, I see. I, you know, I, when he works, when he works in the gym, you know, I see things. I'm like, you know, sometimes when he get, you know, he get hit, or something like that, punches him, look a certain way. I'm, like, I'm just looking to see if he, you know, all, all these looks come up. Yeah. You know, if you give me this look here, you're scared. You know, you know, it's like a. Did he? Thing. Did he come to you or did you ask him to go to the, like, 
Is this something that he chose? That came to me because I'm like, when he asked me, I'm like, because he did karate. He was in like, everything I did, he did. Uh huh. He, he found out he should do karate. He was doing karate, playing football, and then he won the box. I'm like, was that like a proud moment for you when he finally like asked you and, and you realized he was serious? Did you like, did you feel something or was it just another another sport? No, I'm like, I was like, ah. Ah. But you know, it's like, he's quiet. He's, you know, like laid back. Yeah. And I guess I look at him like, I don't want to box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to box. Hey man, cause my dad's a world champ. I got big shoes to fill. Last one from Info Joe in California. I remember Wilder saying having sex while in training camp or before a fight doesn't bother him. What do you recommend for fighters? Should they abstain from sex? Personally, I felt stronger for my border wars fight not having sex for two weeks. <clears throat> I mean, when I was fighting, I didn't have sex. For the whole camp. For the whole camp. Damn! Everybody, Old school. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. All right, Mr. Breland, where the champ is here. What are they calling it? Camp champ? Camp champ. All right. Peace. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com backslash the Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.